In this video, I am going to explain to you the importance of understanding secondary IP subnet configuration on your layer 3 Cisco switch or router. When do you want to configure the secondary IP subnet? Why you want to consider even configuring this secondary IP subnet on your Cisco switch or router? I am doing this configuration for you on a Cisco 3750 switch. Let me show you, show version. It is a Cisco 3750 and I'm running an advanced IP services image. So if you are not able to configure this secondary IP subnet, you may want to check whether your image support this feature. So let's look at what are the interfaces configured on this switch. Show VLAN and I do have bunch of VLAN configured other than the default VLAN. So VLAN 10, 20, 400s are configured. Let me see what are the IP address for them. Show IP int brief. And you can see VLAN 1 is shut down. VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 has IP configuration on it. Let's see what are the names for this VLAN. Show VLAN and VLAN 225 is the management VLAN and VLAN 10 is an IoT devices VLAN. So let's look at the configuration of VLAN 10. Show run int VLAN 10. So it has an IP address. It is a slash 24 subnet. So VLAN 10 is associated to a slash 24 subnet. Think about this VLAN is a IoT devices VLAN and your customer come back and say, we are accommodating more and more IoT devices now and we almost run out of IPs and we are having connectivity issues. So one thing you need to understand is when IP addresses uh, run out, the devices on the subnet is going to have connectivity issue because you are not going to have IPs available for the devices joining the network. This happened to one of our customers and he came back and asked uh, me, I need a new VLAN and uh, a new subnet, a bigger subnet so I can accommodate more IoT devices. I told him uh, if I allocate a new VLAN and new subnet, you are going to have problems uh, communication between these two VLANs because VLAN, you know, it is a broadcast domain. The devices on one VLAN will have restriction to communicate with the devices on the other VLAN because when things are configured on a firewall and stuff like that, you need to explicitly allow the communication between these uh, two VLANs and subnets. So I told him I'm going to use the same VLAN, add another subnet into the same VLAN so you will have more IP addresses available for your devices in the VLAN. Think about in a situation you don't have the feature to add a secondary subnet to the same VLAN. So what the customer has to do if he needs just one VLAN and a bigger subnet, you need to allocate a bigger subnet and the customer has to go back and re-IP all the devices in the previous subnet. It involves a lot of work. Basically, secondary IP subnet resolved this issue. And he was surprised that this can be done. Because most of the time, people think you can associate only one subnet to one VLAN. It's like a VLAN is a broadcast domain. People think subnet is also a broadcast domain. But if you add a secondary IP subnet to the same VLAN, devices will be able to use the same VLAN ID and can get more IP addresses from the subnet. Basically, you can break that rule by adding a secondary subnet to your VLAN. So I'm going to show you how to add a secondary subnet to VLAN 10. So let's go to int VLAN 10 IP address. I'm going to add 192, 168, 20, 1, 255, 255, 255, 0. So I'm basically adding another slash 24 to this VLAN 10. And make sure you add the keyword secondary. 
secondary and show run int vlan 10 and now you can see you have a primary subnet and a secondary subnet you don't see the word primary here because the switch or router layer 3 interface know this is the primary subnet and this is the secondary subnet normally in this kind of configuration you will see an ip helper address pointing to your dhcp server so let me add that to also conf conf t int vlan 10 ip helper address say your dhcp server is on a different network say 10 10 1 1 and show run int vlan 10 so when a dhcp request come in your layer 3 interface on vlan 10 will forward your dhcp request to your dhcp server at 10 10 1 1 that's all about adding a secondary IP subnet to your layer 3 interface. If you have any question, please put down in the comment section. I will get back to you as soon as possible. At the same time, if you like the content of this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and turn on the notification so you will get notified when I release my next video.